Hello, everybody. Um, let me make sure that I can see all of your chats here. All right, here we go. Hello. I'll give it a minute for some people to join us. Hi, D. Hello, Terry. I know everything when you two are here. D, I am exhausted. I worked Tuesday through today, open to close, because my partner was on vacation. And luckily, Monday is a half day, but oh, I'm tired. But I missed my little crafty room, and I missed you guys, so... I had to uh had to get my butt down here. All right. So, I'm going to do a couple of things here. I just wanted to like you know when you like you go to the grocery store and you buy certain groceries and you're like I want to cook everything and eat everything. Well, I kind of feel that way right now <laughs> with these stamps. So, I want to use the pan pastels, which I have here. And I did open my blending, um, colorless blender. I almost said blending solution, colorless blender. So I want to use that and see how it works. And then I have these two patriotic um, stamp sets. So this one's from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. And I did make a Memorial Day card last year with this one. It's called For Those Who Served. And then this one is retiring from Stampin' Up. I don't know if it's still available or not. I'll link my Stampin' Up page and you can go check. But this one's called Loyal and True. And the fact that they're both military based um, and they're both silhouettes very close to my heart. Um, as most of you know, my father was in the military for 22 years. Uh, he passed away. God, it's 2011 now. No, was it 2011? Yeah, it was 2011. So um, it's been a couple years. So Memorial Day, usually uh, like tomorrow, I may or may not take the kids down to the military cemetery and go visit him. But it gets really crowded. Like there's a lot of people that go. And so it's not as personal. So we usually go uh, a couple times a year we go and visit him. So I may or may not go tomorrow. But these are the things that I think about when I'm you know, thinking, okay, what kind of card ideas can I come up with? And so I know Memorial Day is two days away, but I thought this would be a good way to use all my crafty stuff, if that makes sense. Who's on here? Hi, Spirit Junkie. Hi, Jen. So I am using some cheapy watercolor paper. I don't have it in front of me. And I've cut it up. It's the same stuff I've been using um, into five and a quarter by four. And it has a smooth side and it has a little bit of a texture side. Because I'm going to be stamping on this, I'm going to be using the smooth side. And then I have some sponges on the side here. So the first one I want to do is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to copy this image here. I want to see how the pan pastels do with cloud stencil. Hello, Deidre. So I think I will do my pan pastels first and my stamping over top. If this light is bothering you guys, that glare right there, let me know. I'll turn the light off. All right. So I'm going to be using this light blue color, which I believe is called turquoise. Let me look. Oh, look, I can flip it over. Yes, it is called turquoise. And I'm going to be using the um, Blue Night Rubber Stamps stencil. And I'm going to be using one of these little wedgie sponge things. I'm just trying to make sure that it's cleaned off because it has quite a bit of blue on it. And let's see how we do here. So I'm just going to take a little color, a little bit, load so easily on the sponge there. And then just stencil it over. Yeah, see, you can see I still have too much dark blue left on there. That's all right. I'm sure that the colorless blender will help us blend some of that out. And there's so much color on this sponge that it's just going down with ease onto this stencil. 
I'm basically going to do the whole background. And for those of you that are going to be attending stamp shows where Blue Knight Rubber Stamps is going to be um, featured, I would definitely go check out their booth because rumor is they um, are going to be having a pan pastel line. Just saying. You heard it here. Hi, Christine. Okay, so my clouds are in there. They're very kind of messy right now. So I want to take a clean, cleaner sponge. I don't have one. I think I need to go buy some more sponges. And try this um, colorless blender. You know, I'm just going to use the same sponge. I'm just going to clean it off here. Hopefully it does it. And we're going to try this uh, colorless blender and see what it does. Because I haven't tried it yet. Oh, it really does just kind of blend things along. Ooh, I like it. So all it's doing is softening my hard uh, lines there, the harsh lines. Um, it's not altering my colors at all. Oh, that's really pretty. Can you guys see that? Is my lighting off? Um, but it's softened everything up. It almost looks like a real sky. Ooh, I'm very impressed with that. Okay, so that background's done. Now we're just going to stamp. Move this out of the way here. And my little, my little mini Misty. Take my foam out. Um, Sherry, I'll show you what I spray mine with after we stamp this. I've only got, I just started getting these. I've only done three videos with them. The first video was me just playing around with them. And then the second video, I mixed them with different mediums to see, you know, how they would work. And that came out pretty cool. All right, so I just lined this up. And because my card panel is a little larger, I can always cut it down. And I'm going to use my favorite black ink, Versafine Claire. And use my little blue right rubber stamps handle. And it's going to take a couple inkings because it is a silhouette stamp and we want it to be nice and dark. Um, I, Spirit Junkie, bought all of my, pa um, so I was sent a couple of samples from Pan Pastels because I asked for them because Lynn at Blue Night Rubber Stamps um, turned me on to them. And then I went to my local art store, which is Blick Art Store, which used to be Dick Blick Art Store, and I bought six more, I think. Um, and that was one of the ones that I purchased. So it, the, it didn't come in any of, my, I didn't buy any sets. I bought them individually. And the problem here is the way I have the stamp lined up, I didn't realize it's hanging up on the edge. And I'm trying to figure out how do I fix that now without messing up my whole stamp. I'm just going to have to cut that end off, I think. I got a little too quick there. I guess I could. I could. I don't want to mess with it. I'm going to say I could take it off and then move it over. But at this point, I'm just going to leave it alone. There are some risks not worth taking. Hello, everyday life. 
Sherry, I did not know that they carried them. I'm having fun with them, Sherry. I just got them. And so, um, you know, doing these backgrounds and stuff, I think it's a lot easier. And what I like is it's not as messy as my distress inks. And I love distress inks and the backgrounds that I can make from them. But then I end up with like you know, a couple days of inky fingers. So with this, the pan pastels, it washes right off so easily. That's what I like about them. All right, this is going to drive me nuts that I can't finish that corner. All right, guys. Don't hate me if I mess it up. Hopefully it's not too messed up. Oh, I didn't even think about that spirit junkie. She said, mask it off and then stamp it. Oh, I messed it up. It's got a shadow. <laughs> I should have done that spirit junkie. Fear not, my friends. I have extra paper. <laughs> okay, we're going to try this again. We could, I'm not going to throw this away. I'll let it dry and then I'll use the backside for another project. So I don't throw my stuff away. I save them and my mistakes and learn from them and just try again. Okay, moving on. Let's try that again a different way. Hello, Emily. Okay. Again, on the smooth side, this time I want a little bit of a different look. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a different look in different colors. We'll go back to the cloud one if we have time. We know that one works. I am going to do a patriotic red, white, and blue without the clouds. Just red, white, and blue. Which is what I think I did last year with the distressings. So I'm going to go into... Uh, permanent red and the dark blue is called phalo blue. So we'll start with the red and I'll just do the top third of the card. Oh, it's such a luxurious bright red. And I like using the watercolor paper on this because it really does have a lot of tooth and it holds that color very nicely. And it's very, very low dust. That's another thing I like is you're not getting it all over the place. All right. I'm going to skip the center part for a second and then go into the blue. Very dark, deep blue. And I don't have all the colors, but I've had success with mixing the colors. I'll show you guys that in a second. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in with my colorless blender and do that center part. Get that. And you could actually do the whole thing with the colorless blender and it just smooths the whole thing out. Ta-da! Now we have this nice red, white, and blue kind of background. Let's try stamping this again without messing it up. All right, we should have better success this time, hopefully. You guys have big barbecues planned this weekend? Hello, Nikki.
So, Spirit Junkie, the pan pastels are not inks. They're a pure pigment powder um, in a cake format. Very similar to if you, the very, very soft, very smooth, almost like um, a makeup pressed powder is what I would say. Um, so they're a lot easier to clean up. They blend very easily. You can mix them. So it's a pastel format, um, but it doesn't come in a stick. So you're not limited to what you can do with it. So I know a lot of um, professional artists like to use it almost like a paint where they dip into it with a brush and make beautiful artists um, drawings and paintings. If you go on YouTube and search pan pastels, you will see all of these beautiful um artists come up um but i just like them because i think it's really easy to make backgrounds with them d says nope no barbecue d i'm working monday so i'm not barbecuing either i took the kids out to dinner last night we went to olive garden i said this is your memorial day dinner we are not doing barbecue although leah got to go swimming at her babysitters today already and it's only it's only 70 some degrees here maybe it was in the 80s today but not enough for me to go wanting to go swimming but you know kids they'll they'll swim anytime anywhere and because I'm using watercolor paper again, remember it's textured, so we got to give a little bit more stamping. Love. A little more pressure. Hold it in place. Give that ink some time to travel. A little bit of stamping CPR, as Tim Holtz would say. We are almost done with this image. You and your cars. This is a great time of year for you can go do car shows and things like that. Terry said her Canada Victoria Day was last weekend. Nikki's going to barbecue with her friends. Did I tell you guys I went on a date last week? <laughs> That's right. CPR stamping. That's from Tim Holtz. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. I think I'm pretty good with this. We're going to leave it alone. Um, D, it was nice. We went to lunch. We went to a Korean restaurant, which I don't get to go to very often. So I was stoked about that. Um, and he was very nice. And, uh, yes, he did pay for lunch and we are still talking. So taking it slow, not rushing into anything, just, um, enjoying each other's, uh, company so far. Um, and we'll see where it goes. I mean, if anything, I said that, I definitely made a new friend out of it, and uh, we'll see. Oh, I bumped the camera. Um, okay, so I'm not done yet. I have these wonderful sentiments also from Blue Night Stamps. I'm going to take this one off of here. I was going to, well, we'll get back to that one. Okay, so we have... Thank you, God bless America, land that I love, in memory of many, in honor of all. Heroes wear, don't wear capes, they wear dog tags from a grateful American, and it has these stars. So I think because it is Memorial Day, we got to go with in memory, in memory of many, in honor of all. And hopefully we get this to stamp okay, because I'm really not eyeballing it. I mean, I am eyeballing it. I'm not measuring it. I just make sure it looks straight. Such a tiny little print on there. Emily, I went on this app called Bumble. 
Oh, that looks good. I'm not going to stamp that again. Um, where the woman gets to make the first move. So you don't have to worry about a bunch of guys kind of harassing you and stuff. Okay, so in memory of many and honor of all, it is a little crooked, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to do the cloud one again, but I'm going to use the other stamp set. I did kind of want to use them together, but now I feel like that would be overkill. So let's go back to the cloud one for those of you that messed it. I'm going to put that one aside a second to dry. Oh, let me show you guys the mixing. See, this is where it comes in handy to have mistakes. So we're going to turn this over and... These are so easy to mix. Put my stamps away. I love these cards because that's all you do is you take your stamp, you put it back on here. It's already laminated. And now I can throw it back in my box or my drawer. It's very easy to see. I don't have to fuss with any bags. And you know what? If I get ink on here, so what? It cleans right off. So I do love the, this packaging idea from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps is space saving and practical. So I, I do like that as well. Okay. Going back to mixing, just to show you guys a change of subject here. I'm going to go back into that red. And again, you don't need very much. I mean, I barely touched that. And look at all the red that came. This is like the be most beautiful color that I would love to have a lipstick in this color. All right. And then um, go back into the blue. Okay. Oh, a little more there. And just to show you guys. They do mix. So now we're getting this purple color in the middle. And again, with the water color paper, it's really holding that in and, and the tooth in the paper really grabs onto that. And I don't have orange and I don't have green and I don't have purple. Well, I do purple, but I was going through and mixing my primary colors like this and getting a variety of different colors until it was to a place that I liked it. So let me just show that to you guys. And that didn't take very long, but you could see if I continue to bring color in and blend it, it goes to this purple. It's a deep purple color. I hope the camera's picking that up. You can really see it there in the middle where it went from red to blue into purple. So it is easy um, to blend them as well if you don't have certain colors. That's all I wanted to show there. Um, yes, Emily, I am using the softies. It's called softies tools or soft tools. They are also from pan pastels. These are called the angled slices. Um, I bought one came in my beginner's kit and then two came in a pack together. Um, and they have different ones. This other one's called a sponge bar. And then they have these little handled ones, which they call knives and they have oval shapes like uh, triangular shapes, all kinds of different covers for these. So you, and you can use a brush, you can use other things as well. All right, back to our, our cloud one. Again, using the smooth side for those of you that missed the beginning of the video, I made a little bobo. And all you do when your sponges are used to clean them off is just rub them on a paper towel. Yes, you can go up and run them under the sink, under soap and water. Um, they do stain. It's not going to hurt anything. But to get most of that pigment off, you just rub, rub it on a paper towel and it will take um, that pigment off of there. So you can use it in into different colors or lighter colors or darker colors. So you can see I still have a lot of pigment left on this sponge that I want to get off. All right, so back to our paper. We're going to do the cloud one again. And I'm using the turquoise color. What I should have done is went from the bottom up. Let me do that.
Now all I did was I went in with the colorless blender. All my sponges are contaminated. Okay, here we go. So the colorless blender, got some of that on the sponge, and then just went in over my image, and all it does is it softens everything, takes, us the, takes the hard edges out, evens out the color. Any place that has too much pan pastel, it moves out of the way, but it does not take anything... Um, it doesn't alter the way that it looks. So now it looks like a really soft, cloudy sky. And that was so easy to do. And it's not very messy at all. This stencil, this cloud stencil is from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. All right, so now I'm going to go in with this other image, which was the one I, I wanted to use is the, um, this guy from loyal and true and again this is retired from stampin up i don't know if it's still available or not but they put it on the retired list but i want to use one of these sentiments see i wanted to use them together like have this guy here i think that's going to be overkill like too too much on the image what do you guys think Should we do them both? I think it's gonna take too long for me to stamp it because it's a solid image. So I'm going to leave this guy here. D says try it. Okay, D. We gotta start with this one first and then we'll put our guy on. I pinched my finger at work today and it really hurts and can't see it, but this part here got smashed. I'm trying to be very delicate with it. I got an owie. Okay. So I want the grass. I want the bottom all covered with that. All right, we should be good right there. D says, it's only paper. You're right, D. Hi, Sherry. This is when I love getting my stamps out where I can just play with them and mix and match different companies and different designs that are close enough and come together and really allow you to be creative. You know, you don't, a lot of times when companies um, promote, they say, oh, you can only use our stamps and things like that on, um, I don't like that when people say that. I think you should use, try all different papers and try all different inks and try all different stamp companies and you buy the ones that you're most attracted to. I'll give you a perfect example. You guys know I'm a hobby stamper for Stampin' Up. I sell some of their things. I just went through the new catalog and there's a beautiful peacock stamp set in there. And I'm not going to get it. And I'll tell you why I'm not going to get it because I have the layered one from Hero Arts. So to me, buying two peacock stamps just for the sake of having one from Hero Arts and one from Stampin' Up, I'm not going to buy it because I already have one. But I will buy the paper from Stampin' Up. So, you know, when you're on a budget, you feel like, oh, I have to have this, that. You, you really need to know what's in your inventory list uh, so that you don't buy duplicates or don't buy something you already have. And then you have money to buy other things. It's like these pan pastels, you know, I have distress inks, which are very similar. I have the uh, gelatos, not the same, but you know, mixed media kind of stuff. And I really only started off with a few colors of the pan pastels because I'm like, I know which colors I use and which colors I don't use. So there's really no point in me going out and buying all 92 colors. I know that I do a lot of sunset skies. I do a lot of evening skies, you know, uh, sunrise skies. Those are the ones I would use the most. So that's reds, orange, and yellows. I do a lot with cloudy skies, so blue. So I didn't go out and buy a whole bunch of colors. I bought the ones that I know I'm going to use the most. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're doing your shopping. You don't have to buy what everybody else has. What's the newest? What's the latest? What's the greatest? When there's a lot of good companies out there that 
you probably have something similar in your stash. The, the point of this hobby is to have fun. It's not to be peer pressured into buying something all the time and trying something new. It's like glitter paste. There's so many companies that make glitter paste right now. I basically just have maybe 10 of them. Just the colors that I use. Yeah, we have to start um, really watching the companies we're supporting because there are a lot of companies in China that are stealing ideas and posting and selling them on AliExpress. And you really got to be careful. You know, I get it that maybe $25 is a lot of money to spend on a stamp set. But if it's a stamp set you really like and you're going to be using it, support the local artists. You know, saving that $10 by buying it generic from a company that stole the design and you're going to wait months for it to come over here from China. And I will guarantee you the quality is not going to be the same. Right, Xanadu? Correct. You know, so support my favorite thing. Simon says stamps. Blue Knight stamps. Um Creative Vision Stamps. Those are the companies that I love the ton. That's a company that I love. Hero Arts. They're all great companies that that's make good quality photopolymer stamps or red rubber stamps. And, you know, I used to really only buy photopolymer stamps because it's easier for me to stamp. But now with the stamping tools that they have out, it doesn't bother me so much to go with the red rubber stamps. The rubber stamps are actually a better quality stamp. They'll last longer. And I know these were hand-pressed in the United States by these companies. Hello, Tracy Darling. Yeah, Brutus Monroe. Exactly. So we got to support these little guys. We do not want our hobby to go extinct. Uni stamps. Yeah, there's a lot. There are only one or two stamp companies that, honestly, you guys, that I probably would not buy stamps from. Um... Only because I had bad experiences with them. I'm not going to bother to mention them. Because I don't want to give them the publicity. But you'll see there are one or two companies that you will not see me use. Because as a consumer, I had a bad customer experience. So I will not be using them or buying from them. And, th and that's just unfortunate for them. Yeah, Whimsy Stamps. I haven't tried Ink Road Stamps. I'll have to look into them. We got to get young people involved. I mean, I know you guys think it's cute that um, Leah is six years old and wanting to stamp and do this stuff with me. Xavier was the same way when he was that age. Um, and as they get older, obviously they lose interest. But I'm hoping someday when Leah gets older and she wants to go looking through the scrapbooks and she sees all of these million pictures I took of her. And um, I'm done stamping this. I'm not going to go anymore with this. Um, that, you know, she's like, oh, I want to go and make cards. And that these handmade cards mean something. Because I don't really know that anybody just looks at them and throws them away. Everybody that I know um, that gets cards from me is like, this is so special. And they save them. I save all the cards you guys send to me. Um, they're all, in fact, I have boxes of them. Um, but they're all special in their way. And then I go through and I look at them and I remember, oh, yeah, I remember when so-and-so sent this to me. So let me keep this here. Move my magnet. I'm going to put our soldier over the grass here. So it looks like he's standing there saluting. This is my dad. This is his buddy. I'm going to get all choked up, guys. No, I'm kidding. I'm good. I'm good. I still talk to my dad. I know he's not here, but I pretend that he is. When I go fishing particularly, I'm like, Dad, um, can you send me a fish? I've been sitting out here for how many hours and didn't catch anything. But yeah, I have a deep respect for our military and what they do for us. Now, this particular stamp has kind of a distressed look to it. It's the way the stamp was manufactured. You can see that in the image here. 
So it it's, doesn't need to stamp out perfectly. And we don't want it to look like he's floating, right, Dee? Oh, that's pretty good, right? Just got to make it a little darker. This is cool. I might send this to my dad's best friend. I know he's not watching. He's probably out fishing right now. This one is the retired one from Stampin' Up! Tracy. I don't know if it's available or not. They just retired it. I will link my link. Go on the website and take a look. It's called Loyal and True. I just picked it up in the retirement sale. So yeah, I'm combining Stampin' Up! and Blue Knight here. Tracy's page, Tracy Holtz, is going to be a guest designer next month for Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. Congratulations, Tracy. That's got to be so exciting. We are almost there. A couple more stampings. Thank you guys for your patience. I think Xavier's going to run down here and tell me I'm using up all his internet. Oh, D, I didn't even think about that. I need some camo paper in the back of this. It's a great idea. Hello, you. Hi. They want you to do a guest video. They want so there's this stamper called Simon who is a little older than you, and he has his own stamp company. He's like 16, I think. And uh, they want me to get you some of those stamps and have you be a guest designer. You want to do that? I don't know. You would you do it? Do you want to look? Come on, they got grandsons and. Sons and nephews out of your age, and they, they want their kids to be like crafty like you. Would you do it? He just keeps saying, I don't know, I'm walking away. <laughs> CPR stamping. <clears throat> I have Lego stamps from Kindred Stamps you could try. Want to stamp some Lego dudes out? What are you guys plotting over there? Did you just kick your sister off the internet? <laughs> no, I was doing something for um, my game, but my phone is not working. So, Do you guys hear his voice, how it's changing? He's turning into a man. <laughs> Leah, I am surprised you have not fallen asleep yet after being in the pool all day. Okay, I'm going to do one more with our soldier and we are done because this is taking far too long. Worth it, but I don't want to keep you guys on here this whole time. And then we need to pick out a sentiment. Tracy, Xavier will be 13 in September. My official teenager. And boy, does he have the hormones and the attitude already. Ugh. He's in a size 12 shoe now, Xavier. He's in a men's 12. I can't believe it. And he's already taller than me. I mean, I'm not very tall. I'm only 5'4". But I'm going to say he's probably 5'6 at 12 years old. Yeah, he's going to be tall. Ooh, I really like how this came out. All right, so I was going to put a sentiment on there. How about just thank you? Does that say it all or what?
my glasses just bumped my oh I gotta take our dude off. Sorry, soldier. Tracy was just here. She was in Gettysburg, which is like, I don't know, two hours from me, I think. Maybe a little further. Camo is a wonderful idea. That is really crooked, Nance. Can't stamp crooked. All right, let's try that. Thank you for being my friend. Ah, that's terrible. All right, we're going to fix it because I don't like that at all. Yuck. We're going to cut this down a little bit to, let's see how much we can cut it down to. Can I cut it down to five? Eh. I'm just going to slice right under there. That's what happens when you uh, don't like it. All right, so, so I don't have to cut the card anymore. I'm going to show you guys a little hack here. Take that off. So down at the bottom, clearly I missed lining that up. I'm just going to take my ink pad and go direct to paper here and just kind of rub that in. And fill that silhouette image in with the same ink so it'll dry the same even over here. Which is what I should have done on the other one instead of fussing with it. And I messed my card up. And now I could glue this back on here. Oh, I like that better. So yeah, we're turning mistakes into creative happy endings as Bob Ross would say, right? All right, but before I do that, we want to seal this. Let me move this out of the way, wipe my desk off. Ooh, is that thunder outside? Okay, this is my little spray box. You guys all have one of these boxes from Simon Says Stamp or My Favorite Things or wherever. And mine just has spritzed paper towels in there. And so to set all of this pan pastel beautiful cloud background, I'm going to put our little pieces in there. And then I have a little bottle of spray. Now, I've heard you can use hairspray, but I bought this tiny little spray can of basically clear spray paint. Uh, it's clear gloss. I need to go buy a matte one. But this is called Shortcuts. It's a little tiny can. It's only three ounces of paint. And we're just going to spritz, spritz, spritz. And that really makes the clouds pop too. Okay, and then we just let that dry. And I would glue this to here. And then what I'll probably do it, once it's all dry is... Put it on a camo background because that was a great idea from Spirit Junkie. Okay, guys. So let me show you again what we used today. We used pan pastels. And again, if you are going to a stamping show, check out Blue Night Rubber Stamps because I believe they have set up a deal with pan pastels and will be having their own sets. So just check them out. Um, this retired stamp set is called Loyal and True. It's from Stampin' Up. I did not go and see if it's still available or not, but I will link my Stampin' Up link so you guys can check that out. I used the sentiments from Blue Night Rubber Stamps called God Bless America. And there you can see all of those. And 
And then also um, for those who served is the other set from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps that I used as well. And I just used watercolor paper. All right. So that's what I used today for our little cards, guys. And here's our little red, white, and blue one that we did. And then I will spray this one down as well. I'll put my ink down here and I'll spray this one and make those into a card. Okay, guys? What do you think? If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate that, guys. If you are catching us after the live, make sure you click the subscribe button that's going to come up in the corner and click the bell, which will give you notifications when I go live. Um, but any comments or questions you have, post them down below. I always appreciate you guys giving me suggestions or asking me questions. That's where my ideas come from. I, you know, don't have like this unlimited creative source. You guys often ask me questions and I say, oh, let me go on and answer that. So that's where we are today. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. I will be posting some more videos. Hopefully this weekend I'll record a whole bunch for you guys because I was working all last this week, so I didn't get to do that. But I want everybody to have a safe Memorial Day. Please, if you see someone in a um, military hat or uniforms, just thank them for their service. They go through a lot. Their families go through a lot. And without them, we wouldn't be living the life that we live, which a lot of people take for granted. And as a military army brat, I'm very thankful I wouldn't be who I am without my dad's guidance and his uh, military career. So thank you to everybody who does serve. If you have someone in your family that serves or you've lost someone like I did who has served, um, it's a very special time of year to think about that. I know it's not Christmas or Thanksgiving, but it's another holiday that needs to be recognized. And, um, you know, these are two beautiful stamp sets that honor those people for us. So thank you guys again and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.